Uh, hi, my name is Vabhav Chug and I'm a graduate student in Electrical and Computer Engineering. Um, so this is a part of my final project for the course EEL 6509 Wireless Communications. Uh, this course is instructed by Dr. Dapping Wu. And uh, here is a brief presentation of uh, my final project which is a quantitative analysis on the comparative study of various error correction techniques. So the name might sound a little intimidating. Uh, but it's not that complicated. Uh, I'll try to have the explanation really simple and I'll try to go over the matter really slowly so that the listeners get a good understanding of what's going on in this project. So what is this all about? The first question is what is the project all about and what are we actually trying to achieve in this project? So first I'll try to explain the project in layman's terms, talk a little bit about why errors occur in wireless communications and how this analysis helps us. And um, most important thing is what do you actually learn at the end of the talk. So in layman's terms what happens in wireless communications is you know you have a sender and you have a receiver, right? So there will be a source and there will be a destination and then you have some communication link between the source and destination which is obviously wireless in this situation. So here what we are actually trying to achieve is we have a source, we have a destination, right? And then we have a wireless channel between it, which is essentially the air around us. So, when something like this happens, right? We have a situation where there can be errors induced in the channel because, you know, there is randomness in the nature and then you have uh, a lot of stuff going on. We will talk about it in more details in the coming slides. But here, what we are actually trying to achieve is we are actually trying to minimize the errors you know, due to the randomness in the nature, we are trying to minimize the errors which uh, the receiver receives in a transmitted packet. Um, again, it's really important to discuss why errors occur in wireless communications. So, as I said, there is a lot of randomness in the nature and then there is a lot of noise around, there could be interference between uh, different users which are using the same channel, there could be uh, fading, there could be synchronization errors, there could be quantization errors and a lot of things which go around. So I'll talk about it in more detail in the coming slides. Uh, again, how does this analysis help? Now this analysis helps us in getting a good understanding of uh, how different techniques can help us achieve different performances in terms of the error rates, in terms of the packet error rates, the bit error rates, in terms of the power, the signal to the noise ratio and various different parameters. So as we go on in the talk we will see how the analysis of different error correction techniques helps us to understand uh, the fact that you know we can use a specific error correction technique in a specific scenario. So at the end of the talk I expect the listeners to learn about all the five error correction techniques which I'll be talking about and then they will get a good idea of uh, you know where exactly we use the error correction techniques and out of all the different error correction techniques which one is the most ubiquitous, which one is the most widely used and uh, uh, again uh, I'll finally conclude with uh, some of my final thoughts that I have about this project. So moving on, uh, I've put up this project on the web page as well. So this is my web page. It's www.ufplaza.ufl.edu. So if we quickly click on the link here. So here is my web page where I've put up this project. So this is wireless communications. So I've put up the abstract, the introduction, uh, and we discussed the different error correction techniques which are there. So now the good thing about this web page is that I've also included a list of MATLAB codes that uh, we use to uh, generate the results for simulation purposes to model various different blocks in various different designs. So we have the MATLAB codes for each and every uh, result that we have generated for each and every simulation that we did over the course of the project. So again going down, uh, I've put up this web page because there were a lot of details which I could not put on the paper because of some size limits. Um, but yeah, this web page contains a good detailed description about the project. So there are a few images which I could not uh, put on or uh, put in the paper which are there in this web page. Um, so again, for example, if you want to look at the MATLAB code which was used to generate a, a, a graph like this, 
you can quickly click on the link and here is the MATLAB code. So again going down we have a lot more graphs here in this web page uh, than what we have in the paper because there were some graphs which I thought would be a little redundant if we add in the paper because uh, we did a lot of analysis, this analysis was really exhaustive. Uh, we plotted a lot of graphs and for different sizes of package, for different error rates, for uh, different EB by N0 ratios, for different values of noise variances. So all these graphs which we plotted are there in this web page. So this web page is basically a detail, gives a detailed description of uh, whatever is there in the project paper. Right. And again you have the uh, PDF report and then the project, uh, project proposal for the here. Alright, going back to the presentation. Let me quickly uh, give a brief background of how a communication system looks like. So this background is really important for the listener to understand uh, where exactly we are uh, actually trying to uh, do the error correction part of uh, the project. So here we have an input stream coming, input data stream, which is essentially a sequence of bits. Uh, we format this input stream and then it goes to the source encoder. We do an encryption on it. We do a channel encoding, we multiplex uh, various different lines and then we do a pulse modulation, we do a bandpass modulation, we do a frequency spread if necessary and if we want to use multiple access techniques like CDMA, FDMA or TDMA, it is done here. Right before the channel we do a multiple access and then we have the channel here. So basically this is the transmitter part of the communication system. Now. These colored blocks right here, they represent that these blocks are not mandatory to be used in a communication system. Um, we can use these blocks to enhance the quality of communication. So for example, encryption is done for data protection. We do channel encoding for uh, forward error correction. We do multiplexing so that we can have uh, more users using the same channel. And then we do a pulse modulation. So all these white blocks right here, these, these are mandatory in a, in, a, uh, in a transmitted communication system. And then here we have the channel. This is essentially the channel um, which is there between the source and the destination. So in this project, whatever we are trying to achieve is at this block where we do the channel encoding. So Again, in the transmitter, we are trying to, you know, change certain things. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little more detail. We'll, we're trying to change certain things in the data. We're trying to add some things to the data, which is termed as channel encoding. Okay. And again, at the receiver, we have the antenna, and here is the channel. We get the received bits from here. We have a multiple axis going on here, followed by a frequency despread, and demodulation and sampling. We detect the incoming uh, signals after demodulation. We do our demultiplexing, a channel decoding, a decryption, a source decoding. And then finally the receiver gets the formatted bitstream which was actually sent by the transmitter. So again here in the receiver part, whatever we are trying to achieve with our simulations, with the kind of analysis that we are doing uh, is at the channel decoded part. Now let me give a quick background on channel encoding and decoding. So we just now saw that where this channel encoding fits in the transmitted part and where this channel decoding fits in the receiver part. So now where are these codes actually used? Now these codes are used whenever you want to have uh, an error control uh, capability in the system. So with that what I mean is, now as I explained earlier that there could be a lot of errors induced because of different natural phenomena going around. What we actually try to do here is we actually try to detect the errors at the receiver and if possible we also try to correct the errors with these channel encoding techniques. So here what we have essentially is a bit stream and we try to play around with the bit stream, we append some data to the bit stream, we um, transmit the entire packet with some computations that we do with the bit stream which is essentially known as channel encoding and then we have different models of communication channels. So one is the binary symmetric channel, 
which is just used uh, when we have quantized values of zeros and ones. But since the natural channel around us is the AWGN channel, uh, here AWGN means the additive white Gaussian noise channel. So additive means that you are adding noise to the channel, white means that the noise will have all the different frequencies. Uh, Gaussian means that it will have a statistical distribution, a statistical Gaussian distribution. And then this is uh, the noise which is being added to the channel. So we use the AWGN channel in all the uh, simulations that we have done in this project, which is more because you know the deep space communication channels uh, are more of AWGN channels. So the deep space communication channels and you know in deep space missions where we use uh, where we extensively use these error correcting codes, they are usually modeled using AWGN channels. And again, one real important property of uh, this AWGN channel is most of the error correction techniques or even error detection techniques which are designed are designed keeping in uh, view the AWGN channel. So they are especially designed for these AWGN channels. Um, so what is channel decoding and channel encoding? And you know, which codes are considered better? So it turns out that channel decoding is a little bit more complicated as compared to channel encoding. Uh, we will come to it in the subsequent sections. Uh, this is more because you know it's the decoder design is a bit complicated because the decoder expects some erroneous values. But then again, the the codes which are considered better, uh, for example, the LDPC codes and for example the Turbo codes, which are considered as modern codes and which are used most extensively in today's communication systems, they have a simple decoder. Right? They have a decoding logic which is simple and in a way, that is one of the prime reasons why these codes are considered better. So, again, these co codes can be broadly classified into two categories. One is the code which uses uh, algebraic computations and one is the code which uses some probabilistic analysis. Uh, again, the LDPC and the Turbo codes, uh, which we have discussed in this project, use probabilistic statistics to uh, kind of encode and decode the values. And then again, um, the other codes which are discussed here, like the CRC code and the Reed Solomon code, they use more of an algebraic mathematical approach. So, as I said in our experiments, we will be using the AWGN channel and the BPSK modulation. Uh, let me give you a quick overview of what all different uh, error correction techniques we have discussed. So, firstly, we start off with the most basic error detection technique, which is most widely used is the CRC based error detection. Here we have used uh, one of the papers, we have uh, referred to one of the papers which actually says that CRC can also be used for error correction. But most widely this technique CRC is used for error detection. Then we will talk about a novel trellis coded error correction assisted by CRC and bit stuffing. So again for uh, this analysis we refer to one uh, of the IEEE papers which, are, which was published in 2010. Uh, to do an analysis on uh, how this error correction technique uh, plays out in different scenarios. And then we talk a little bit about the Reed Solomon codes. Um, we'll compare the Turbo versus the LDPC codes. And then finally, I'll con conclude with some final thoughts.